till die. There's a DJ in your town. Woo! Don't let the problem get to die. Hey. There's a DJ in your town. That video introduction had absolutely nothing to do with this video. It was just leftover footage and I didn't want to be wasteful. It was kind of cool though, right? That was us riding back after off the streets the other day. Now today's video is five tips to get you through your first 100 mile ride. Very quickly first though, a shameless plug for one of my own videos, 10 things every cyclist should own. I'm not gonna be going through everything you need to take with you, so have a look at that video first. Make sure your bike is in good working order before going out. This is the first tip. Now 100 miles is a pretty long way to cycle. You're gonna be riding most of the day and you don't wanna make things harder for yourself than they have to be. Plan your route carefully. Elevation or how much climbing you're gonna be doing during the ride will drastically affect how long it takes and how difficult the ride is. Using something as simple as Google Maps, you can get a pretty good idea of elevation. Use it to plot some routes and see if there's any hills on it that you wanna avoid. Even better than that, use a specific app for planning your route. I'll put these in the description down below, but websites like Komoot, Strava, and Map My Ride are really, really useful for planning routes tailored to cycling. Komoot in particular is very user-based. We've often used it to plan our bikepacking routes because it chooses the best roads for cyclists and the most used ones as well. Using these apps, you can also filter if you wanna be doing a bit of gravel or just road. It will show you an elevation profile, even sometimes wind direction and things like that. So they are mega useful. Check those links down below. You'll thank yourself for it in the end. Point number two. Bring enough food with you and make sure you eat it regularly. Like if you're riding six or seven hours, which is probably how long your 100 miles is gonna take, you're gonna be spending even more elapsed time in the outdoors, potentially not near that many shops. You wanna make sure you take enough food with you and eat it regularly. So at least every 45 minutes, eat something from the start of the ride. If you've eaten a big breakfast, you probably won't feel hungry after the first 45 minutes, but force yourself to eat something anyway. Even if it's small, it will make a big difference later on in the ride. You don't have to go with specific bars and gels, although they are convenient. You're pretty much paying for convenience in terms of wrappers that are easy to open. It's food that's not gonna fall apart, uh, but there's nothing wrong with bananas, jam sandwiches, packets of sweets, anything that's full of carbohydrate. That's what you wanna go for. That's what's gonna get you through. Don't bother with stuff that's got high fat content. It just makes everything harder to digest. and may give you stomach issues. The more whole foods you can stick to, the better as well. So bananas and other bits of fruit, it does start taking a bit of a toll on your insides when you're just eating sugary processed stuff. So bear that in mind. If you wanna stop for lunch, stop for lunch. Eat some proper food. If you start feeling really weak, you're losing concentration, you're probably on the edge of what we call bonking. Bonking is what runners call hitting the wall. You don't wanna be in that state trying to eat before that happens because coming back from that is really difficult. Having said that, we have all been there in the petrol station coming out with your hands full of just everything you can get your hands on and uh, yeah, everyone has to experience it once, right? Number three. My third tip is bring enough layers. Now this may be directed more at you European riders and guys in the UK. We have a cooler climate here, but even in your hotter countries, riding 100 miles does take it out of you and you can end up getting a lot colder when you're tired. Even on warm days here, I try and ride with a gilet. It scrunches up small, it's like a small sleeveless vest. It will fit in your pocket and really does make a difference in terms of wind chill. Especially on warmer days, you're gonna be riding a long time and your kit's gonna get a bit sweaty. Once it's sweaty, it's wet and then you get cold as soon as you stop. So, gilet. Nice dry one in your pocket, really, really good. Number four, I think we're up to number four. Pace yourself. You're gonna be riding all day, you don't wanna burn all your matches at the start of a ride, which is really easy to do. When you're feeling good, you just wanna push on, you think you can go forever, you can't. Now, if you're riding with a heart rate meter or power meter, that's gonna be really helpful in this situation. If you've been riding with them for a while, you know what's sustainable. You wanna keep in that zone one and two. We can go more in depth with this in a separate video, uh, but there's also nothing wrong with perceived effort. 
or riding to your perceived effort, which is literally just how you feel. If you're gonna be riding for six or seven hours, you wanna make sure you're riding at a pace that you can still sustain a conversation. Maybe go out and practice riding like that a couple of days before. You wanna maintain that on the climbs as well, because when you hit the climbs, it's very easy to get carried away and ride too hard. If you hit a load of climbs early on in the ride, you could be burning all those matches too early on and then suffer loads at the end. So pace yourself. If you want to push yourself more, that's fine. Just try and wait till the last bit of the ride where you know you can still get home afterwards. You don't want to ruin your whole day just because you wanted to have a smash fest at the start. Use your gears properly when you hit the climbs, get into that little ring and you shouldn't have too much of an issue keeping your heart rate down and pacing yourself. Now my last tip today is ride with mates. Not everybody likes riding with people. Some people like to go solo. It's totally personal preference. But for your first 100 mile ride, I think it's a sensible idea. First of all, you can share the load of the stuff that you're carrying. So you can share food, you can share inner tubes if you puncture and need them. If you're starting at the same place, you can get away with just taking one pump between the two of you. And if you do unfortunately encounter a problem, it's safer having someone with you too. Things might get tough towards the end of this ride, so having someone with you to encourage you and get you through those tough patches can be really useful. Drafting shouldn't be ignored either. Even with one other person, if you're confident enough, sit on the wheel and you'll be saving a load of energy. That's because they will have created some clean air that they're riding through, so it can be up to 20% easier riding on their wheel. If you want to ride in a bigger group, those benefits are amplified even more. It's amazing how far you can go with a nice tight group of riders. So consider organizing a small group of riders together, perhaps with some more experienced guys too, to help you get through that first 100 miles. There's also nothing wrong with entering an organized event as well. Here in London, we have the most famous one, Ride London. And, uh, and that 100 miles, even though it's very hilly, there's so many people on the road, you get a huge amount of drafting benefit, loads of enthusiasm, a safe space to ride without cars, and you can really switch off and enjoy Enjoy it. So there you go. There are my top five tips for getting through your first 100 miles. I thought it would be a nice video to film on a very rainy day where I don't particularly want to go riding. Let me know in the comments down below what your top tip would be. Equally, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you for a vlog soon.